Hello and welcome to first Tech Talk series on Cisco Support Community, where we will bring technical experts from Cisco to share their insights on specific topics, selectively chosen based on most common conversation themes on our technology area on community. This is an effort to share valuable insight from Cisco experts on those popular themes. We hope you will enjoy it. My name is Vinay Sharma and I am the Technical Community Manager for the Wireless Technology at Cisco. And today, our discussion topic will be Cisco Office Extend Access Point OEP 600. Our expert joining me today is Sharath KP. And he's a customer support engineer with Cisco TAC based in India with broad experience in wireless technologies. Welcome, Sharath, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Vinay. It's my pleasure. Now, I would briefly outline the objective we will be achieving in today's discussion. We will cover a brief introduction to Office Extend Access Point solution, followed by OEP 600 series access point and controller settings for Office Extend solution and access point configuration for 600 series. Now let me explain in brief about the product that we are going to discuss. An Office Extend Access Point provides secure communication from a controller to an access point to a remote location, seamlessly extending the corporate wireless LAN over the internet to an employee's residence. With that in mind, Sharath, can you walk us through the slides, please? Sure. Uh, as you all are aware, uh, Cisco offers a, a suit of you know teleworker solution to these mobile workers or teleworkers who would like to have this flexible work option, uh, probably uh, you know, an environmental friendly alternative to actually commuting, go green here, uh, uh, and still be productive uh, in whatever they do. Uh, we can't compromise on productivity, neither will the manager, right? So uh, in Cisco, we, uh, as a company, we strive hard to uh, provide you a suit of op options that you can choose from. Uh, if we can broadly classify uh, uh, the Cisco teleworker options, then we can uh, divide them into three. Uh, the first one would be the Cisco virtual office. This is typically done using an integrated service router, 800 series, 1800 series, 1900 series maybe, and generally used uh, for an actual branch office where you have uh, quite a few uh, uh, remote workers. The second one, all software option, is the Cisco uh, VPN and Cisco AnyConnect solutions that we offer in the client laptops, where a client open ups, opens the laptop, you just log in via VPN, and you're back into the corporate network. So these are the two options we had, and today, we will take a look at the new one that we are offering, probably one of the most exciting and most flexible uh, teleworker solution that we have brought out till date, the Cisco Office Extend uh, solution. So what is Cisco Office Extend solution? Uh, it's, it's nothing but extending your corporate network into your remote location. I'm saying remote location, not your branch office, not your uh, home. Uh, it could be anything. It could be a hotel or it could be somewhere you have broadband access. We'll take a look. Uh, yet it's a uh, make making sure that it's simple secure and flexible enough let's take a step back and uh, understand a bit of hi history and the requirement uh, details so today as you all know broadband is like a bread and butter for any any uh, individual so you have easy broadband access everywhere and also uh, businesses the companies want a lot of wireless deployment that's because uh, everybody is going mobile with uh, laptops, uh, iPhones, Androids, what not. Uh, and these can do the same work which your uh, old, uh, you know, uh, uh, business heavy uh, workstations used to do. They, they do the same business critical uh, work that uh, was previously done by the workstation. So with Office Extend Solution, what we, what we are doing, what we plan to do is combine the benefits of easy broadband access and uh, mobile uh, connectivity at a remote location and then give you a solution which can take care of uh, all sorts of uh, uh, flexibility uh, shortcomings that we had. Uh, so what, what does Office Extend actually do? It extends your corporate network into the remote location wherever you're plugged in from with the same set of feature features and security that you would typically find in your corporate office uh, and thereby no compromise in security or productivity. Now, uh, having said this, uh, let's take a deeper look at what uh, it offers, the features, the benefits that we find in Cisco Office Extend Solution. Performance. We cannot compromise in terms of performance just because it's a branch office or just because it's one single user. 
because end of the day productivity uh, equa you know uh, equates to the company performance so with the office extend solution that we are talking today we are offering a 802.11n dual band uh, uh, radios which is at least 6 times faster than the older 802.11 bga radios and solutions that we had uh, you are talking about speeds up to 350 mbps security is a must because uh, the point that we um, have to note and the uh, important point that all the administrators would come back and ask me or ask anybody is we are going uh, we are passing data over a public internet so there's no compromise on security we are using an industry standard cap protocol along with data dtls which is nothing but an encrypted tunnel between your access point and the corporate network and uh, which makes sure your data integrity is not compromised so there's no compromise in terms of security uh, other important feature we are talking about teleworkers who would not really want to uh, get into the technical uh, you know hassles of setting up a complicated network probably we are looking at somebody in sales who has no idea about what uh, networking uh, setup is about and uh, in, in for such such scenarios we have made sure uh, the office extend solution is a simple zero touch deployment kind of uh, uh, product we have we, all you do is just go in plug in your access point and you have your corporate network extended at your remote office final point and this is a point that comes into consideration a little later once you get used to the comfort of having an office network in your house and then probably you would want to do voice calls without having to uh, you know spend money or on your mobile calls uh, you know because you have an office network here like a VoIP call or something with Cisco office extend solution we provide an end-to-end -end voice and video service just like a corporate uh, office you can use your iPhone applications to make VoIP calls and then let your company get charged for it. Having said this, uh, today in this presentation, one of we'll primarily focus on uh, the Cisco Office Extend 600 series access points. So these are hardware built products specifically built for Office Extend solution uh, deployment, and we'll take a deeper look at what these 600 series access points are. Now let's take a look at the key features we have in Cisco Office Extend uh, 600 series AP. This is the only dual band IP available in the industry. We have uh, vendors, competitors who have uh, something similar to this, but we are the only uh, uh, you know a product line that have a dual band uh, 802.11 uh, AP that we have here. Okay. Another important point to all the administrators what are the WLC versions what are the controller versions that will support the Cisco office extend 600 series AP take a look 5500 series Wizen 2 2500 series sounds familiar right yes exactly it's the new generation of uh, wireless LAN controllers that we have brought out in the recent past that will be doing the office extend solution not the legacy one the 400 4400 series the 2100 series no uh, what version does it start the support from 70116 um, if it's confusing let me take a step back i know uh, you might have seen office extend uh, solution details in a 6.0 uh, probably configuration guide in a cisco website yes we started the office extend solution in the end of 6.0 release but 70116 is when uh, the oe access point start this get the support from uh, from the above set controllers so just keep this in mind another important note to all the administrators out there who would want to deploy this make sure make sure your management IP address is IP routable over the public internet because that's the kind of design we're talking about thank you Sharat uh, I have two questions here so the first one is does 1140 access point supports OEP great question a uh, simple but uh, very uh, genuine uh, customer uh, requested question mm -hmm. yes 1140s do support OEP now if, if this is a little confusing let me explain this in office extend solution uh, we have uh, two categories one we call uh, software configured and one is the hardware product build which is the 600 series AP that we are talking about right. uh, in the software configured we have the 1140s the 1130s the old ones one up here mm -hmm. and the 3500 series AP uh, the Bugatti Veyron of the Cisco uh, which can do office extend the version uh, in which the support starts for different AP differs 
uh, for the 600 series it's 116 for uh, the others it's 60 something something mm -hmm. so it, it, yes the answer is uh, yes it can does it can all right do. all right and i have another question which is uh, asked by one of the user on the cisco support community so he has 4402 and 5508 controller and uh, both running on version 7 so will the controller be compatible if it is used as primary and secondary Yes, we find a lot of scenarios where we have a 5500, 4400 backup primary setup. Mm -hmm. Very general, uh, very realistic uh, expectation from the customer because uh, they might buy a new 5500, keep the old 4400 as the backup. Yes, the failover, the primary backup setup, uh, the functionality works fine mm -hmm. uh, with the 5500, 4400 setup, but office extend failover won't happen. So let's assume you have a 5500 uh, series of controller as a primary. Right. Uh, deployed with Office Extend APs. If there is a failover from the primary to secondary, which is a 4400, mm -hmm. everything else works fine except the Office Extend. Uh, as we said, uh, for Office Extend, we have this specific set of controllers which can do Office Extend. And just to add a little more insight, if users want to know why is Cisco doing this, uh, why not mm -hmm. give support to the right. old product line, uh, the answer is uh, we spoke about a secure data DTLS. So it requires a special type of licensing and image mm -hmm. to do that encryption over the public internet. And this can be done only in the new controller series that we have. And hence, uh, we are uh, obliged not to support it in the older series of the controllers. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much. Let's take a deeper look at uh, the functionalities of the Office Extend 600 series AP, uh, what it can offer, what it can do, what it cannot do. Take a look at the slide you got two corporate SSIDs. Yes, two corporate SSIDs. Let's assume you have a sales and a HR SSID that you want at your home, assuming one of you in, is in sales and one of you, uh, one of your, uh, say, a wife or someone is in uh, HR and you want both the SSIDs extended at your house, it can do it. Support up to four wired corporate ac guest access. So what is this? Uh, are we not talking about wireless access points? Yes, we are, but this is a wireless access point which can do a little bit of Ethernet switching as well. It's got four uh, dedicated ports, three of which can be used for wired access. One is for remote LAN, which we'll take a look later, and thereby you have support of four wired corporate devices as well. A pretty interesting feature, actually. One catch and one beautiful feature, I would say, if I'm deploying it at my home, uh, one of the primary reasons I would buy is I don't have to buy another a modem or a wireless uh, you know router you know why i can have a family ssid or a personal ssid configured in the same access point which can do corporate uh, you know uh, you know extension and etc cetera, etc cetera, um, which can have a personal ssid and i can have my uh, family members connect to the personal ssid without tunneling them back to the corporate they can watch what they want they can do what they want uh, and you get this you can do this with a personal ssid so the number of clients we are looking here is about 15, quite a huge number for a remote location, right? 15 wireless clients can connect to this Office Extend access points. What happens if more than 15 clients connect? It works fine, uh, but if it doesn't work, if it's broken, then don't expect us to fix it. So that is the thing. So take a look at the diagram in the bottom, a uh, very interesting slide. A uh, 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 slide before we sp uh, spoke about why we have a dual band 802.11, uh, you know, access point for a remote uh, worker. Why have a dual band? It's an extra radio cost, right? But typically, what we forget is in a home environment, uh, you have so much interference involved that it's very, very hard to work with a single band AP. What interference at home? Uh, you forgot your cordless phones, you forgot your microwave ovens, you forgot your baby monitors. And uh, the best of all, the one I would prefer, the gaming console, the Xbox, the PlayStation, all the wireless gaming you do, the wireless mics, uh, all of them ca can cause interference in the 2.4 gigahertz range. So we have a dedicated 5 gigahertz range, which you can probably use to do uh, your office work silently. Now, uh, let's take a look at how an office extend access point looks. Uh, we have one in the studio as well. So this is a 600 series office extend AP, pretty uh, beautiful one. Uh, white and you know small and all shining uh, on the slide you can look at the back side of a 600 series access point uh, I just spoke about the ports of the 600 series access point let me uh, explain it again 
it's got dedicated four plus one port so four ports uh, for office extend solution uh, functionality one for the van which will take you to the internet in the four ports uh, if you take a deeper look three of them are dedicatedly can be dedicatedly used for wired guest access uh, or wired access, access wired corporate devices anything and one uh, slightly you know marked with the LO this is used for remote LAN what is remote LAN let's take a look at it in the future slides very very good features lot of things packed into one small device and definitely a very good product now uh, like a real techie let's get into the installation and configuration part of it so we spoke about secure and simple installation procedure let's see what it is typically a user a teleworker uh, for example if it's me i'm given an o office extend uh, ap which has been primed with a controller ip address by the it staff of your network the it will issue you an office extend 600 series ap which has the controller ip address primed uh, previously you take the office extend uh, access point to your home plug it into your broadband uh, wired connection whatever it is there you go you have your corporate network extended at your home all you have to do is just connect and start working that's what your manager expects now uh, you can also do a personal SSID uh, if you want for your personal use for kids and wife and who not so that's all you need to do so very simple installation steps let's take a look at a network diagram so what's a what's a tech talk without a network diagram involved right so uh, in the slide uh, you have a typical uh, branch office corporate office uh, network diagram how it works so uh, on the left hand side you have what we call the uh, home office or the remote location right hand side you have your corporate the dreaded corporate network so you connect your office extend ap on uh, onto your home or the remote location it tunnels back over the wi over the broadband internet of uh, any public service provider back to the corporate office joins your controller and extends or provides you the office network in your home now the important point that we should take from this slide is the controller is placed in the dmz why in the dmz because you're looking at connections coming from the public internet right you can't afford a controller sitting inside your network and letting the outside the uh, you know kind of connections join messages come into your network so typically we keep the office extend ap outside in the dmz and uh, let the office extend access points join them we use public ips so that the office extend ap can reach it over the internet um, you will have to do the same uh, that's what this is configuration guide suggests we have scenarios when they use uh, you know uh, private ips 192 tens etc and still it works fine but if you're actually looking at the deployment it will be a public ip finally one of the important point i've mentioned this in the slide as well make sure you open the cap web data and control ports the port numbers are there uh, 5246 and 5247 otherwise your join process fails so uh, let me interrupt you and ask another question uh, from the community so the oip works fine on 5508 controller but uh, when the customer is trying to set up on 2504 controller in the same way with the with the nat ip on the management interface you know and port forwarding on the cap web ports the oip cannot connect as we say when we when we are deploying office extend solution right since it's a little out of band solution uh, which involves a lot of public uh, you know tunneling and then private setup as well so make sure we follow all the guidelines all the ports are allowed as we just mentioned right. uh, the controller in your case the 2500 is placed in the dmz the ports are open inbound outbound so that uh, there is no hassles for the ap to join so mm -hmm. typically in such scenarios we would have missed something from the configuration guidelines that we have um, and the ap does just doesn't join okay thank you now um, we took a we understood what an office extend ap can do its uh, functions features let's take a look at the controller settings point number one we are talking about connections coming from the public internet make sure the checkbox for NAT is enabled on your management interface so which is shown on the slide right we have highlighted it make sure the NAT uh, enabling NAT option is uh, checked in and then put in the proper IP routable NAT IP address that the management will be NATed to so that your office extend 600 series or any office extend APs know where to come and join now um, an important step before we take a deeper look into the other configuration aspects 
since you have placed your DA, uh, controller in the DMZ, you are looking at office extend, uh, you know, joint requests coming from probably from across the world, you know, it could be anywhere, it's a public IP address, so you can have a list of uh, access points, your own access points, somebody else's access point just coming to try and join in. So, uh, what we recommend is kind of have a MAC filtering as we have shown in the slide so that you know which access points that you will be allowing to join. So, probably have a list of MAC addresses that you can configure on the controller that you have the IT, the network support staff has issued to the teleworkers. Uh, you know, make sure the MAC address is noted down, the MAC address is, is there in the filtering list, make sure only those uh, APs are allowed to join. Um, again, this is not a mandatory step, this is an optional one, but yeah, uh, probably one thing to, you know, kind of add a little more to the security. Now, uh, let's get into the all important uh, part of how to enable Office Extend solution. Uh, earlier, we spoke about uh, software solution as well as hardware product solution. Uh, here in this slide, uh, I have purposefully uh, taken 11.30, 11.40 AP uh, and uh, shown how we do Office Extend in it. So, little confusing, but let me s uh, sort this out for you. On 11.30, on 11.40, on any or any non-600 series access points, the configuration is to keep the access point in HREP mode. Yes, keep the access point in HREP mode, even though it's not doing HREP. Then go to the HREP tab check the office extend uh, solution checkbox. So, you put it in H3 mode, check the office extend solution, you have the access point working in office extend mode. This is for any non 600 series access point. For a 600 series access points, let us take a look. Yeah, it is local mode. It might be confusing, but a point to remember is, I said it earlier in the slide, these access points are built, product built for office extend only. They can neither do local, I mean the actual local, nor HREP, nor monitor, nor sniffer uh, kind of functionality. They can just do office extend. So, typically as an access point 600 series AP join, uh, it will show up in local mode, which is fine. I mean, you do not have a HREP option that you have to go and check in, etc., uh, etc. Et One important feature, the yellow port on the office extend AP that we have, the remote LAN. What is a remote LAN? Uh, remote LAN is nothing but a, a LAN network that you can define from your controller to which your uh, wired devices can connect. It's a it's kind of kind of extending your LAN network into a remote area. This is how the configuration is done. We have a snapshot of how a remote LAN is configured. The third one is a remote LAN in the configuration example. Look at the drop down. You have WLAN, uh, you have guest LAN. We had it before. And now we have a remote LAN. So, this is a new feature that we have added up in the new software releases. You can look up for the details on the Cisco configuration guides, uh, especially the wireless configuration guides, and you will get everything that you would need. Let us take a look at the finer details of the configuration. So, we have configured a Office Extend AP for you. And um, point to remember here is Office Extend AP can do two corporate SSIDs, yes, can do two WLANs and one remote LAN. So, keep this in mind. You cannot have like four remote LANs or decide that I will do only two remote LANs. No, it is two WLANs or and one remote LAN or vice versa. What is the configuration steps on the controller? Yeah, you set up an WLAN, um, SSID, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, if you are configuring a remote LAN, make sure the WLAN is uh, mentioned as remote LAN um, in the drop down box. Point to remember, only the WLAN with IDs, the WLAN ID number 1 and 2 are automatically pushed onto your Office Extend AP. Let me give you an example. So, you have deployed this access point in your house and uh, joined the controller fine. So, what can you expect uh, out of this one? The uh, corporate WLANs 1 and 2, uh, the networks which are tagged with 1 and 2. So, this is a typical uh, default behavior that we have with 600 series access points. Uh, what if there is an exception? Yes, I know, I, I know there is a question there. Uh, what can we do? Probably use one of the feature what we call the AP groups, the one intelligent feature we had earlier and kind of uh, toggle around with what WLAN will be mapped to what AP. So, with that you can uh, kind of bypass this uh, guideline, but default behavior is WLAN I with ID number 1 and 2 will be automatically broadcasted. Let us take a look at the configuration, uh, how uh, an Office Extend AP uh, looks with a AP group. So, here we have a snapshot of an AP group that we have used to configure uh, an Office Extend AP to broadcast uh, WLANs 1 and 3. Getting into the finer details of what AP group can do, 
uh, we said um, only remote WLANs with ID 1 and 2 are broadcasted, uh, automatically pushed. So, uh, if we have two, uh, sorry, three, four, five, what do we do? Use AP groups. So, we have uh, given you a snapshot of how this is done. Um, and in, in addition, if you have a remote LAN uh, with an uh, intent of kind of creating, uh, you know, remote access for the wired guest users at your branch office, uh, make sure you check the remote, uh, you know, LAN drop down there and uh, make sure it falls in, um, in the, as per the guidelines that we have just mentioned. What are the security supports uh, features that we have? Uh, one of the important things that we mentioned in the earlier slides is we extend your corporate network in the same way as it uh, as it is in your main office into your branch office, meaning that there is very few changes in security that you will need to do. You probably will not have to change your wireless profile when you move from your headquarters office to your branch office. Uh, there are small things that we need to keep in mind. These are the ones that are mentioned in the configuration guidelines as well. What are they? No CCX support. We will not need a CCX kind of supported uh, clients in your remote office. No uh, CCKM. Uh, it should be either be only you know 802.1x or pre-shared key because we are not really looking at a lot of key caching and you know kind of roaming stuff here. So it's 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 very uh, justified that we don't have a CCX and CCKM. Another important note, uh, make sure your security settings are identical for WPA and WPA2. Confusing? Let's take a look in the slides. In the slide, you have a snapshot of what uh, I would say or what we would call an in incompatible, set incompatible setting. Take a look at the snapshots. Uh, you have uh, TKIP enabled for WPA, then you have AES enabled for WPA2. Will it work? No. On the other one, you have uh, TKIP enabled for WPA, then you have AES TKIP enabled for WPA2. Will it work? No. Sharath, we have a question regarding uh, you know the same wireless LAN security on 600 series on by one of the customer on uh, community, and uh, you know he says I have set up uh, OEP 600 series and it joins to controller 55508 uh, fine. Now the corporate SSID is shown by the by the clients, but uh, he is not able to connect to the SSID. So so what could be the reason for that? Yes, we have the connection uh, between the access point and the controller. Very good. Uh, we have the corporate ex, uh, SSID being uh, broadcasted in your home as well. That's even good. Right. But the clients can't connect. Uh, so these scenarios come, um, and I'm glad you asked this question right now, when we have uh, something called an incompatibility in terms of security settings mm -hmm. between what is, what is actually said in the you know uh, guidelines for uh, Cisco Office Extend 600 Series AP and what is actually done. We just spoke about incompatible settings for uh, security when mm -hmm. it comes to WPA and WPA2, right, about having symmetry in the WPA, WPA2 settings. Uh, if you miss it, a scenario something like this would come. So probably they need to just go back, take a look at uh, what they have configured and what our guidelines say. There are a couple of them that we have to follow. Mm -hmm. No CCX, no CCKM, no incompatible WPA, WPA2, and few more, and make sure one of them is corrected and you'll get it working right away. So we have the wireless security settings incompatibility issue here. Exactly, All exactly. Right. All right, thank you. Uh, having said that, uh, in, this, in this slide, let's take a look at what is the correct uh, security setting. Uh, what you're looking right now is what we call an um, compatible or a correct security setting. We have symmetry when it comes to WPA and WPA2. AES TKIP, AES TKIP on both the sides, AES, AES on both the sides and it will work fine. We spoke about security, we spoke about other rich features. What about QoS? Uh, isn't Q asking for QoS a little more uh, kind of, uh, isn't it a little overdoing things when it comes to remote uh, office users? Absolutely not. Nowadays, the demand is that they want exactly same settings uh, that you have in your corporate SS, uh, corporate network. Uh, let's take a l let's uh, probably uh, look at it this way. Uh, if it could be someone high up in your company, probably a CEO or a VP or SVP who has been uh, who wants uh, Office Extend deployed, and he will not compromise in terms of QoS. So, can 600 series Office Extend AP do QoS? Yes, it can. Exactly the same way that your corporate SSID or WLAN does, mm -hmm. uh, the exact same settings will be pushed on to your Office Extend 600 series AP uh, with the framework of broadband access keeping in mind. What it cannot do is uh, call admission control. Uh, we will not really need CAC enabled when it comes to 600 series AP, but everything else is exactly the same. Platinum, silver, voice, whatever it is, 
you have it at your home. Now let's take a look at the finer details of the Office Extend 600 series deployment when it comes to the controller because uh, in this tech talk uh, idea is that we cover the finer points which we tend to forget. Uh, let's take a look at one by uh, each one of them one by one. Okay, No coverage hole, um, typically no RRM settings. Why? Because you are deploying probably one at max two uh, Office Extend APs at your house. You are not kind of looking between like 15, 20 APs and roaming, etc. It's not really required. It's an overhead that we have removed. No Aeronet IE, no Aeronet extensions uh, support. Why? Again, it's not required uh, for an you know remote worker because it's typically got to do with the compatibility issues and we will not really focus on that when it comes to branch office. Management frame protection uh, is not supported, uh, not required again. You are looking at users who are sitting inside your home and trying to access the network so mfp not required client load balancing and client band select uh, again are not uh, supported because uh, these are some rich features which require a lot of uh, back end processing from the controller uh, and uh, will not be typically used uh, effectively when it comes to remote office extension uh, deployment so we have highlighted few points uh, just take a look all these points are mentioned in the Cisco configuration uh, guide, so we can take a look as well. Authentication, uh, what can we do, what we cannot do? Uh, we can do everything except Leap, which is a Cisco proprietary protocol. Why? Because we are kind of moving away from Leap. We have our vulnerabilities with Leap, so no Leap, everything else. Eep TLS, Eep TTLS, Eep Fast. Uh, if they come up with some new Eep, maybe that one also. Uh, we have just uh, mentioned it. Look at the second point, uh, if you are doing a local Eep, EAP on the controller, you can uh, use all of them except LEAP again. So uh, just keep that in mind. Let's get into some deeper and finer aspects as well. Uh, remote LAN. What is a remote LAN? You're extending your corporate wired network onto your house and uh, probably giving uh, users a, you know, an option or an advantage of having wired clients connected. How is the setting done? We just spoke earlier. You can take a look at the snapshot as well. Uh, guidelines the key points in this or the takeaway points from this slide are you can connect up to only four wired devices uh, on the remote LAN now uh, what uh, now is if it's a little confusing to uh, think about it you have one remote LAN port on your 600 series access point the LO one and we're talking about four devices how is that possible you can plug in this port you can uh, put this port uh, as a connection to a small switch or hub but make sure you have only four wired remote LAN clients. Now, uh, this uh, this scenario is something that you have to uh, very carefully uh, uh, you know make sure you uh, follow because if you try to deploy more than four, then you have a lot of other issues that come in like a DHCP IP address, which might not on the outset seem to be related to the you know uh, f uh, uh, mistake of not following the guidelines, but uh, they are you know something like this and final important point that uh, probably will delight you a little bit is the four remote LAN wired connections that we are speaking about are in addition to the 15 wireless clients that we are talking about. So the number does not affect the wireless client connectivity at all. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sharat, based on this, uh, let me ask you one more question which is uh, you know uh, asked by the community users. So uh, do we need to set up this remote LAN with a local interface and have it talk to the controller's internal DHCP uh, server or is it possible that uh, we can set this remote LAN and anchor it off to the internal controllers? A nice question again uh, coming to the kind of uh, integrating anchor foreign setup with the mm -hmm. remote LAN. Right. Uh, yeah, customers when we deploy, when we give out a feature, they try to maximize it and deploy it in you know as all possible ways and push it, uh, you know, in terms of uh, configuration uh, settings, right? So uh, yes, uh, we can have a local interface uh, deployed on the controller, mm -hmm. but if you'd want to do a foreign anchor setup, yes, you can tunnel it back to the anchor controller just like uh, you do for a regular foreign uh, anchor setup and uh, get it working. So the point here is. If you are doing a foreign uh, anchor setup, yes, you can treat this just like any other double LAN connection. Uh, if you are not doing it, then have a local interface, get it uh, to reach wherever it is supposed to reach. Mm -hmm. 
a few final points before we wrap up uh, the configuration details of the 600 series access points. Uh, the radio features, the radio settings of the 600 series AP are not controlled uh, from the GUI of the WLC. If it's confusing, let me repeat. Uh, the radio settings are not really controlled from the GUI of the WLC. Where is it controlled? It's done from the actual access point itself. Now we'll take a look at it. How do we open the GUI of the 600, 600 series access points? Uh, you know uh, your DHCP has given it an IP address through which it's going to the public internet, etc., uh, etc. Et so just put in the IP address on your browser. You get a GUI very similar to the uh, WLC GUI. Put in the default username password, should be admin admin. Uh, and you have a graphical user interface which kind of s it looks exactly similar uh, to what you have in the controller. So they have done a same uh, you know, a symmetry with it. Now look at look at the snapshot here we have uh, for the graphical user interface for the 600 series AP. Other than uh, the fact that it looks exactly like the controller GUI, it got a lot of other information which you tend to forget as well. It will tell you what channel it's operating, what the radios are on, the TX power, the RX power, the data in, data out rates, uh, quite a few things, clients connect, clients who are connected, some of them at least what's the uptime, MAC address, etc, etc, etc. So quite a few information pushed in on the monitor page or the home page as we call it uh, for the 600 series access point. Now, before we wrap, uh, let's take a look at the all important feature for you and me, uh, the personal SSID one. How do you do it? Uh, so there you go, uh, configuration, drop down, check in the personal SSID tab, put in the name you want it, your name, your whosoever name, uh, put in the uh, WPA pre-shared key, key if you are using and uh, there you go, you have a personal SSID which you can use uh, to connect, browse internet and then quickly swap, uh, you know, move over to the corporate SSID and start working depending on your mood. So uh, with this, uh, we have taken a look into the configuration details on the controller, the access point configuration and in general try to understand what a great solution it is uh, and get into the finer details of the 600 series access point. Thank you, Sharath, for a great presentation. And uh, okay, so let me you know take some time for the questions. Uh, we have a lot of users asking questions on the community, and I have uh, one of the interesting question. Uh, so, should OE mode access point obey the HREP uh, local switching flag on the wireless LAN? Uh, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. HREP and Office Extend are two different protocols. And before I get into answering them, let me just clarify what is the difference. With HREP, we are doing only control packet DTLS. Mm -hmm. With Office Extend, we are doing control as well as data DTLS. Now, uh, regarding the question, uh, should the local switching uh, you know, uh, functionality be obeyed by the Office Extend? Absolutely no. Okay. If the user has got questions, it's very genuine, and we have seen this happen in TAC. Mm -hmm. We do get to see these uh, issues. Uh, it's been a problem with the software. It's a software bug. We have the bug details here mentioned, okay. uh, and it's been taken care in the versions. Mm -hmm. So if we are looking at uh, the problem and if you don't have, uh, the, if you would not like to want to upgrade yet, right, uh, the workaround that you can uh, probably use is uh, make sure your WLANs uh, are, you know, kind of uh, set such that it's more than one to, uh, WLAN ID is set more than 16, so that will take care of the problem automatically. Oh, thanks for sharing the workaround. And uh, another question that user has is uh, remote LAN clients fail to associate with the wired remote LAN tunnel to the wireless LAN controller. So what could be the reason for that? Okay, um, a wired remote LAN client uh, not getting, uh, not being able to kind of associate and right. operate properly uh, going back to the tunnel to the WLC uh, mm. is also something we get to see in TAC. I'll share uh, with you an experience. Uh, one of the uh, things that we look around, mm -hmm. uh, we realized uh, during a course of troubleshooting is, uh, and this is something that we have clearly mentioned in the guidelines as well, and uh, which uh, someone forgot to do it. If you have uh, the data rates of 802.11G uh, configured as mandatory, uh, then there is a problem. So okay. make sure uh, you follow the guidelines when it comes to 802.11G mm -hmm. data rates. It's very difficult to correlate 802.11G data rates and remote LAN connection. Uh, which even I'm not able to figure out why, but that's how it is and we know the solution. So make sure you follow that. Thank you very much, Sharath, for sharing your expertise with us today.
Hope this Tech Talk session was useful to you and we look forward for your feedback. You can send in your feedback using the comment section. If you haven't explored Cisco Support Community yet, take a moment to check out this excellent resource at supportforums.cisco.com. You may also ask questions and collaborate via various media channels like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, iTunes, and LinkedIn. So it's been a great session. Thank you, Sharath, for presenting this session, and have a great day ahead. Thank you, Vinay. Thanks.